Greetings everyone. Um, I hope this video finds you well wherever you are. I've always loved to uh, draw my reflections from the gospel and then to apply it in whatever way it affects our individual lives. Um, many years ago and even even up to this moment, I have uh, been privileged to meet a lot, lots of people who who were either still incarcerated and then they went, they were given parole, or people who have served in uh, you know in detention and they were finally released. And what one of the questions that I always put across to them is why you were incarcerated what was the most challenging uh, situation or what was the most challenging lesson or what was the most important lesson that your experience while being incarcerated what it taught you one question always comes out they always say that um that what bothers them so much is not about being incarcerated but because of the way they they that they are being caught up in their mind that they, they their mindset is just um uh i don't know if i'm using the right word now that why the body is being detained it is not the most difficult thing for them but the mind the mind is being uh uh tortured the mind their mind is being um held in bondage so that brings me back to the reading of today when uh when the reading from the acts of the apostle talks about the the disciples of jesus being detained and the holy spirit came and released them and asked them to go and preach and they went to the temple and when these people gathered the sanhedrins gathered to make deliberations and they were not nowhere to be found and they sent for them and the Bible said, this time without force, they went to them and invited them now to come and talk. And the gospel of today talks about Jesus, uh, talks about the gospel, um, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And anyone who rejects him is already perished. So the lesson drawn from today's situation, today's readings, I begin from the prison. So when you when you look at what the apostles were going through, it was not just that their bodies were limited, but with their mind in expressing the joy of resurrection was limited. Their mind in expressing the goodness of God was limited. They were narrowed. Remember, a healthy body, a healthy mind stays in a healthy body. I've forgotten the way it's been said. If the mind is not healthy, definitely the body would certainly not be healthy. So their mind was, their minds were messed up because they were incarcerated. And they were limited from evangelizing. And how can you evangelize if you are, if you are limited? How can you evangelize if you are if you are narrow-minded? That brings us to what the Evangelii Nunciandi talks about. Uh, the evangelization of the evangelized depends in the concomitance of the evangelization of the evangelizer. So, whatever that you are doing is done according to the mode of the doer. The, whatever you are evangelizing is done according to the mode of the evangelizer. So. Whatever evangelization you're given is evangelized according to the mode of the evangelizer. So these ministers of God, these ministers were narrowed and then that affected who they are. Now, in the practical experiences of our daily lives, you may be looking for, you may be thinking about incarceration. No, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about that. I've, I've, drawn, I've drawn enough inferences to support what I'm trying to say. But the gospel which was narrowed today, which was prevented, which is what the reason, the main reason why Jesus 
came down here was for the gospel to be preached, which, is gave, which he gave them the Great Commission. So the first Great Commission was in Genesis. Explore the earth till. That was to our first parent. The second Great Commission was in Matthew. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. So now the, the, the link between the first reading and second reading comes down to our practical daily lives. What limits you from your output? What, whatever, because God created us. Bible said, God created and found that everything that he made was good. And then he made man. And now, when you come back and you found out yourself that as a result of one reason or the other, you are no longer functioning in your, you are no longer performing optimally then it means you have a prison. You are in prison. What is that prison in your life that is limiting you from the gospel, that is limiting you from being, in your, being at your best output? That is the reason of, for this message this evening. What is that which is limiting you from evangelizing according to the right mode as an evangelizer? What is that which is making you not to heed to the words of the Evangelion Osiandi? What is that? Is it, uh, your, you know, for instance, when you hurt someone, guilty conscience can make you, can limit your output. Once you remember certain things you did and then that limits you. Forgiveness also can also, or unforgiveness can also limit you from your output. You know, whatever you do that makes you feel guilty makes you feel that this is not the right thing you're doing that is limitation and that was why jesus said when you have a gift you want to present to the altar and you remember that your brother somewhere that you've offended your brother somewhere you drop that because he, jesus foresaw that you are not functioning in your most best capacity when you have a limitation i'll give you another instance why jesus said when, when, they said, how, when Peter said, how many times can we forgive? And Jesus said, 70 times 7. To give room so that we don't have anything that will limit us from, from performing optimally. Excuse me. So, so that we don't have anything that will limit us from performing optimally. So... What is that? Is it your sickness? Is it your infirmities? Is it your financial problems? Is it your marital problems? Those are also things that are limiting you. You have to find a way to reach out to Jesus. You have to reach out to Jesus by the merits of, this, of, this, of the gospel of today, which the, uh, the apostle John told us. That God, the God's reason for sending Jesus was first because he loved the world. And who are those in the world? You and I. And then he came to liberate us. He came to set us free. John 1.14 told us that as many as believed in him and received him, he gave power to become the sons and daughters of God. And now you have that opportunity. And then when you reject that opportunity, it means you are shutting yourself down. You are limiting yourself. And then that becomes a prison for you. So invariably, it simply means that a lot of us are in self, are self imprisoned. That a lot of us are, have imprisoned ourselves by the choices that we made. Sometimes by the choices other people made for us that, you know, affected us. But there is always a gateway out of every situation. Jesus is calling you today and asking you do not allow lim these limitations to hinder you from your optimal perfection call on the holy spirit who is the sanctifier the, vivif the, the vivifier just like the apostles were released today the holy spirit is always there to release you and so i pray as i call upon the spirit of life the spirit that gives life, the spirit that makes us who we are. I call upon him 
to send down the, the to send down his grace upon you upon anyone under the sound of my voice are you going through any situation that needs divine attention i pray that by the merits of today's masses and today's gospel that god will set you free like he set free the disciples who were chained because the ministry of the gospel is so important the ministry of the sacraments are also so important that was why the holy spirit came down so that these words can be relayed unhindered and so in your life god has created you and fashioned you because he saw you are wonderfully made and therefore whatever that is limiting you whatever prince of patia that is holding down your life i am decreeing by the power and the anointing of the holy spirit that you that that yoke will be broken i am decreeing by the power in Luke 10:19 that God has given us power and authority to trample upon snakes and scorpions and to overcome every power of the enemy. I am praying that God will relieve you from that bondage. I am also praying by the power in Isaiah 8:10. The enemy shall speak a word against your life and affairs and it will not stand and shall take counsel against you and it will come to naught for God is with you. And Romans also assured us if God is for us no prison shall be against us. This is the word of the of God. This is the word of Jesus who promised us that heaven and earth will pass away and his words will never pass away. Dear brothers and sisters, I call upon you to heed to this voice, to heed to this word of Jesus today who invites us by the power of the Holy Spirit the spirit who gives life who sets one free the spirit who makes us who we are the spirit who cries out out of us and speaks abba father the name of the father the name upon which the world and everything that was made that word is jesus christ and that word is here in your ears and in your eyes about to give you a new life and a new hope May this word through the intercession of our blessed mother Mary the mother of goodness the mother of freedom set us free in Jesus name amen in the name of the father son of the holy spirit amen have a joyful day